we're super lucky to be in California. We're surrounded by fresh produce, you know, things that are really coming just from miles away. Two hours from La Marcha is this Brussels sprout field, you know, where, and we have Brussels on the menu year round. So it's nice to be able to have something that's grown so locally that you're able to source and then serve at the restaurant. Ocean Miss is a grower, a packer, and a shipper. We are trying to deliver the best Brussels sprouts we can. We're growing crops that need a lot of attention. They don't like to get too dry. They don't like to get too wet. They don't like to be too hot. They don't like it too cold. We can't control the weather, but we could do the things that we can control to make that plant as comfortable as possible so that the crop ends up growing at optimal rate and at the best quality for ocean mist. There's a lot of organization that goes on to make sure that it's the right field, right location, because we have different microclimates here in the Salinas Valley. Even with ideal climate and growing conditions, Brussels sprouts are not an easy crop to grow. But you wouldn't be able to tell that walking through the beautiful Brussels sprouts fields in Salinas, California. The fields out here are like pristine. They're the prettiest I've ever seen. And that just doesn't happen. There's a lot of preparation that goes into that. I want you to talk to me about the process. Well, all of our Brussels sprouts are transplanted. So the, the seed is planted in the nursery and it's grown into a small sized plant. And when those plants are tough enough, we bring them out here to the field and we'll transplant them. How do you prepare the ground before you transplant? The, the whole idea is that we're breaking up clods and making this, the soil friable, soft, small clods, something that the plant wants to be introduced to and, and thrive in. Kind of like a cozy baby blanket. We actually call it a seed bed, so we're preparing <laughs> a seed bed. So yeah, Perfect. that's a good analogy. Good. This plant looks, there's still a little dew left from this morning. This plant looks beautiful. It's and really strong. It's a strong plant. So when they come through and harvest them, are they going, they're all going all the way down? All the way down to the bottom, wow. yep. All the way down. And they're hand picking those? They are hand picking You're them. You're kidding me. They'll take the best ones, and when they get further up the stock, these ones aren't developed or ready yet. They'll, so they'll, they'll leave those. And so this will be a second pass. That'll be the next the this next harvest. The next one when they're ready. So this is what they do. Yeah, give, by it a, hand. give it a twist. It's, oh, it's, it's harder twist. than you think. Oh my gosh, it is. And and there you go. Wow. And you know what? I was I'd be fired. You, you can appreciate the hard work that these people put into harvesting this crop. It is amazing. They do this all day long. Well, that wasn't easy. It's not easy. The pickers are putting sprouts on the conveyor belts, which feed into the machine, and then they enter the sorter. And so this, this machine here is the sorter. Okay. And so the sprouts are running through there, and they are being selected out based on size. So they go up, they size them, and then they're boxed right here in the field. Yeah, they're put in boxes, and a certain amount of ocean mist product is, is then cooled and sold and shipped out that way. A certain amount of this product will go to our value-added room okay. in Castorville, and it'll be further processed. A farmer is very independent, self-starter, hard worker, my, my grandfather was a farmer, my great-grandfather was a farmer as well. So I kind of grew to have an appreciation for it. I think it's important that people see what the farmer does um, because most people get their produce from the grocery store these days and they really don't have a feel for the hard work that goes into it. We're trying to save water we're trying to have a safe environment for our employees. We're trying to be good stewards of the land. We're trying to be sustainable. We're environmentalists. And we have to put that all together because this is our livelihood. Is this as tall as they'll get or can they grow taller? They can grow taller. They can grow shorter. Uh, if we do our job right, this is, this is a, a nice size, uh, 24 inches tall. One unique thing about Brussels sprouts is that we will top the plants. If you notice, 
It looks somewhat natural right now, but they're all missing <laughs> the very top yeah. of the plant. Oh, great. Now that you pointed out, that's all that I'm looking at. It's like someone with a bad haircut. And, and every one of them has been topped, and that was done four weeks ago or so. And so we have workers come through and they'll pluck that growing point. What that growing point contains is all the hormones for the plants. And if you leave that there, it's just gonna keep growing taller and taller. But once you pluck it, then it says, uh-oh, we gotta send all those hormones, growth leg regulators, everything down to what we got. I enjoy them off the stock because even though this is taken from the ground, it doesn't have a root system, it's still attached to that stock yes. and it's supporting those sprouts. And I think they're probably somewhat fresher, somewhat different tasting when you break them off the sprout and cook them. Paul is right, it doesn't get any fresher than that. And with Emily's help, that's exactly what we did.